Hi. Um, yes, this is for all you A plus people who cannot. Um, you're getting stuck on the idea part of this. So here I am giving you an idea, and you're going to learn about how to poke holes in things in Cinema 4D at the same time. Um, so essentially, I'm going to make a big three dimensional A. And instead of the little triangle in the middle, so let's make an A first, uh, we're going to have a plus sign. What do you mean by that, Zbarth? Uh, I'll show you. So we're going to look under the pen tool. And I'm going to choose text. And the text that I'm going to make is just simply going to be a capital A. And I want a very, very bold font. So I'm going to, under font, I like Seago. Whoops, but I'm going to do Seago Black. And that is a very bold font. Um, yeah, so that's it. And now what we're going to do is something a little different here. Uh, because I'm going to make a custom shape here inside the A, uh, we're going to close this gap before we start doing any extruding. So let's do that. Um, begin by selecting the text and then making it editable. Okay, so I select the text over here. I'm going to click on this little world icon, which makes it editable. And now I'm going to go into point mode. Point mode. Okay, in point mode, uh, I'm going to select, let's zoom in a little bit, all these points here that make up this little triangular shape. So to do that, we're going to use the selection tool here, and we're in point mode. And I'm going to just brush across all these points. Like so. So I've got that all selected, and now I'm going to hit the magical uh, backspace key on my keyboard, and it will completely delete that. Boom. Awesome. So I, I kind of like simplified this shape before I extruded it. Extrude something, you say? Yes, let's do that. Uh, to extrude this now, we're going to hold on this menu here. No, just kidding. Uh, it's this one here, which is the subdivision surface. And choose extrude. So it's the little green box next to the pen tool. And then I need to drag my text object onto my extrude. So that extrudes the parent and text is the uh, child. Ben, 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 Gabby. Thank you. I just have a feeling it's picking up like everything you guys are saying. OK, uh, next thing we're going to do is, so yeah, I like that this is extruding already. I'm going to click on the extrude object and make it extrude some more. So that's the movement option here. So if I click and drag movement up, I got this nice thick A that I'm going to make an A plus out of. Whoa. OK, fun. Uh, next thing to do, we've got to make the plus. And how do I make a plus? Well. I don't think there's a plus sign shape that will just be automatically generated from here. I guess maybe with the flower you could. I'm not smart enough to do that, though. Uh, we're going to just use another type object, text. And this time, the text is going to be the plus sign. So shift and then plus. And again, I'm going to choose that same thick, bold font. Um, bold, you see bold, but let's see what black looks like. There's black. Awesome. Um, yeah, this is going to be cool. And what else do I need to do here? I need to extrude it. Let me look around. The position is okay. Let's extrude this first. So uh, I don't need to make this editable, but I do need to make an extrude object by clicking on the subdivision surface, holding here, choosing extrude. And then I need to make this bigger than whatever the A was. Nothing is happening because I have not yet created that parent-child relationship. So I'm going to drag text onto extrude. And now I'll go to that extrude tab object, drag it up. OK, so let me rotate around. You can see what this looks like. On this side, it's really it's like flush, totally flush, or maybe in a little bit. I can go to model mode move the entire object through the A, right? So because we're going to poke a hole in this, we've got to make sure that's sticking out of both ends. Um, yeah, 
Let's scale this down because it's too big right now. I'm going to select extrude and then choose the scale tool here. And then with scale, I can just click and drag down to make it smaller. I'll switch to the move tool, move it over. From this angle, it's impossible to tell if it's centered. So I'm going to switch to my four up mode here. That's this fourth button. And I want to just look at my front view. So look, this is a perfectly bird's eye view, a straight on front view. I want to expand this window. So I'm going to click on that same button to expand just that window. And you can see I'm pretty close, pretty close. I might even make it smaller. Uh, let's go switch back to scale. And don't click on one of these parts handles, just click and drag down. And then I'll go back to move. I, I think that's a good size. Uh, it's kind of like nice because the edges are somewhat aligned there. Cool. Whoa, no, don't want to do that. Uh, I want to get back to my 3D view, so I'm going to click on that same square button here. And that will put me in 4-up view. And then we'll expand my perspective view by clicking on that 4-up button. Okay. Okay. So I've got my objects placed inside of each other. They're lined up. Um, I'm actually seeing that's not poking through now for some reason. So let's go back to extrude. And turn up the movement. Okay. I don't know how that got all wonky. That's fine though. Oh, because when I scaled it down. Yeah. Yep. That happens. Um, I might even, I'm going to move this up a bit. Okay, very nice. So lastly, we need to make one more object, and that is called a bool. So let's find the bool. The bool is next to the deformers. So on the left of the deformers, <laughs> you have this little like spoky looking thing. Hold on that. Choose bool. Okay, bool is going to act like a little folder up here that I need to drag my extrusions onto. And... There is a logic to it. There's like an order with which you're supposed to drag things into the bool. Uh, how do, what, that's, that was a confusing explanation. Let me show you first. I'm going to drag extrude so that it becomes a child of bool. So we see the down arrow. Okay. Now, and that was my plus sign. Now I'm going to drag my other extrusion. Actually, let me, I'm going to go back. Whoops, sorry. Let's rename. I'm going to double click. I'm going to rename this plus. I'm going to rename extrude by double clicking on it. I'm going to call this A. Okay. Uh, and I, I believe the order is you drag the thing that you're going to punch out first. So we'll drag plus onto bool first, and then A onto bool. And that punched out, look at that, boom. I had this beautiful A 3D model with a plus sign in it. Um, you know, you can use this for your A plus project or sell this to Adam's Pharmacy. Um, I don't know. From here now, we need to add materials. So let's do that. I'm going to create a new material. I'll select a kind of a bluish hue and then increase the saturation. And we'll just drag that material onto the A. And I'll hit render. Notice it does not add that blue color to the inside of the A. So I'm going to click in this window again, my editor window. And I'll make a second material. We'll do a complementary ish color. Some kind of orangey thing. And rather than drag this to the A, I'm going to drag it onto the plus extrusion in my object manager. So click and drag material, drop it onto where it says plus, and then boom, done. There's that color. You can see me whip around here. Um, yeah, I would pay for this. I would like you to add one light and some kind of background or wall to sit this upon. So really quickly, 
I'll make a cube. Use the scale button, scale it up. Use the move tool. Move this down, maybe move it back in space a bit. Add a light. Remember everything's gonna get dark, so we need to move the light around. Having a hard time getting that axis there, so I'm gonna move my camera. Nice. So maybe three-ish lights. Once you start adding lights, you'll need to add probably something that's gonna light up the inside of it. Fun. Um, now you're ready to render. To render, you're gonna go into the render settings here, settings. And you need to change your, the output size. I'm gonna choose um, from this triangle a preset. And let's do film. We've been making a lot of 1080 content here, so HD, any of these 1080 HDV work. Under save, I'm gonna click on JPEG, or TIFF, change it to JPEG. Close this window. Render menu. Add to render queue. Tell it where to go. Remember, you'll likely need to save it in your miscellaneous folder over here. So Windows C drive, miscellaneous. I'm gonna call this A plus logo. And click save. Just because it's in the render queue does not mean it's going to render. We need to click on the play button lastly. And that's it. Turn that in. Um, and this will be the first in a series of 3D designs for you. So that's what you could label this when you put it on a website. Uh, yeah, have fun. Thank you.